is it reasonable to assume that you're going to develop a deep and introspective relationship with the person that you see every single day only in the context of 15 to 20 other personalities for a short period of time before they're dispensed to go build a relationship with someone else? Do teachers do it? Absolutely. We've all seen the videos of the teachers that have the 150 handshakes. We also see teachers quitting in droves because they don't feel supported. Because who's building relationships with them? They're doing all of the mental and emotional labor and then being told that when things don't go right in their classroom, it's because you and that kid weren't close enough. I disagree if you want to, that's your prerogative. But if things outside the school were handled correctly by society, most kids would legitimately be happy with the teacher who remembered their first and last name, who was kind and who was competent. They would not need so many of their teachers to be pseudo parents. Our okay, so she said a lot. And what's interesting is that she said a lot uh, under a minute or two. I'm telling you, if, if you don't use TikTok yet, you'd be really surprised what you can find there. Um, because a lot of teachers are using that as a source to vent and cope. But part of the reason why I wanted to show you her video was specifically to just see how you felt about it. Right? Okay, hands, and you, you know what? You don't have to show me hands in the sky, but I'm thinking of children, right? How some kids feel insecure saying how they feel. So if you agree with her, raise your hand. Okay, if you agree but also disagree, raise your hand. Anyone feel both, both? Okay, does anybody feel um, like, oh wait, we guess we covered everything. Like, oh, oh, does anyone completely disagree, totally disagree, think she shouldn't be a teacher at all if that's how she feels? All right, good. So I'm glad I know where you guys stand. And I was probably just standing in the wrong spot just then. And let me clip this back off. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, my perspective is that she doesn't really know enough about the ACEs. Terrible name, really important, important stuff what they stand for, and we're gonna get to that. So the purpose of today's session is some background on cell, and I mean real background on cell. Like, I mean, this man is amazing that he published this really around the time when everyone needs it, Dr. Edgar, okay, and his materials are for purchase, you know, when you go into the uh, exhibitors area. Um, but I want to give you cru uh, crucial insight about CELL and how to use it, how I use it every day as a public preschool teacher. Because remember, I clock in 40 hours public preschool in Asbury Park. Then I go to Red Bank, and then I work till 8 o'clock at night with string players. And then I do my own gigs, and then I'm getting my doctorate on top of that. So I live, eat, breathe, sell every single day in a manner in which uh, we'll talk about. So then an overview of the cell and how the music standards have combined, because I actually spoke with some music teachers, and believe it or not, I mean, Arts and NJ is pushing these webinars, and they're wonderful, but some people are still missing them. And I understand if you are, you know, sometimes some people have that Howard Gardner interpersonal skill, right? They really need to bond, they need to work with a person. Um, so if, if you've still not seen them or know what's happening, I'm here, like I said, as a cheerleader to tell you the news about CELL and the new standards uh, coming together and what they call a crosswalk. And then if you, if you feel like acting out like little kids, please do, because I'll show you some of the strategies from the article. Okay, so this is, when I'm not super dressed up or whatever, this is my 40 hours a week. Um, I work with children from adverse childhood experiences. These are things that have been studied for a long, long time. Um, for my own uh, dissertation in my chapter two, I'm referring to this guy Jimenez and all the work they did that helped to create this pyramid of what happens when you have too many ACEs. Um, I've worked with children who uh, have been through a lot of adversity. They're children who, you know, the department of child protection and permanencies working with formerly DIFUS, children who've gone through abuse, neglect, um, all sorts of housing insecurity, all sorts of uh, things. And in working with these children every single day, we actually have a special curriculum called Second Step, called Second Steps. And Second Steps is its own curriculum just about feelings. And I brought some of the materials I snuck out 
Fred and Frida from Second Step, they would love to meet you. Um, to give you guys an overview of how we do it in a more intense, rigorous way, but it's still relevant for children. And then it'll help you think about, ah, now I understand how I really want to bring this into music. Because a lot of people just think about it's the feelings, it's identifying the feelings. So Cell is in five different uh, categories. Social awareness, relationships, decision making, self-awareness, self-management. And these uh, they're really important for the outcomes for children and adults. Children regulate themselves better, they behave better, they listen, follow directions, they bond with teachers better. And you might hear some of these, and that's one of the goals of what Arts NJ told me. They want everyone to be on the same page with the language of self, using the language of self, understanding the competencies, understanding why it's important, understanding its relationship to how you're going to not just use it in the classroom, but just what it is in general. And it's so important that the state of New Jersey has started, uh, has made them a uh, part of the general uh, standards, the new, the new standards. I know for preschool to third grade, for our early childhood standards, these have been built in for a long, long time. But what's interesting is August 2017, even before COVID, the New Jersey State Board of Education started to adopt these sub competencies. Okay, what are the ACEs? Like I said, terrible acronym for really, really terrible things. They are the traumatic events that can have negative lasting effects on health and well-being of children. The household challenges with violence, substance abuse, mental illness, if your parents get divorced or separated, if a parent is incarcerated, uh, emotional abuse, physical, sexual abuse, neglect, emotional or, or physical. And what's not mentioned here, and of course I pick out this graphic, right? What's not mentioned here is if a family goes through gentrification in a certain urban area and it makes them have to move from place to place to place, housing insecurity. Housing insecurity counts as one of the ACEs. And they're actually making this list build and build and build more and more and more. So here's how it works. If you're just reading off this list and thinking of your own life, if you have six or more, statistically, people with six plus more ACEs will die 20 years earlier than those who have none. So if I could go back to the lady in the beginning of the video, what I would say is that the inclusion of cell across the board in classrooms with 150 handshakes, that can make a difference if this kid's gonna commit suicide. That's why we're doing it. It's a state and national initiative to truly finally step into the lives of children. That's what this is about. And uh, look up here. There's different interesting statistics they found depending on how many ACEs you have. Um, look at this one. Twice the number of the like, four or more ACEs, levels of liver disease. That's, that's, that's a fascinating you know, connection. I'm thinking it has to do with alcohol and substance abuse. Adverse childhood experiences are the single greatest unaddressed public health threat facing our nation today. And I know that's in small print. That's from the president, or former president, of the American Academy of Pediatrics. What I think that woman had a point, but part of the point that she was trying to make was about how many hours teachers have in a day. But it takes a second to be nice. It only takes a second. And these are children's lives we're talking about. This is one of the most unfortunate graphs I'll probably ever show at a conference ever. But it's early yet, because the next article I'm going to publish is actually about this and how this makes it so much harder to actually bond with parents and the parent-teacher conferences. As you can see, the more adverse experiences you go through is going to affect the neurodevelopment of children. In early childhood, between the ages of like three and six, we call that like the window. That's the window when we got this gray matter being grown and grown and grown and grown. You know, things happen to this child, it's going to change how much gray matter, really important stuff grows in their brain. And all this, statistically, it'll lead to an early death. So now on a happier note, let's talk about the cell that's happening in the classroom. And I know I just want to check my phone for time. Because we're gonna, we want to act out like kids. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. And I know some people ask for permissions for the slides. I promise, you know, as we transition between this, I'll give it to you guys. Children with higher emotional intelligence are able to pay attention and they're more engaged. 
okay? And re recent research is showing that they're also, because of the lack of socialization connected to cell, they, you know, they've gone through a lot during this past pandemic. Social circumstances and mouth movements are an important factor to discern and interpret human emotions. Uh, that is why, stuff like this from Second Step, okay? That is why this stuff right here is so important because we have social stories like this. We read from cards and on the cards you have the children act out and pretend like about sharing and taking turns and trading and taking a belly breath. And we actually have a really interesting song that we teach in Second Steps about how to calm down. And if you feel like moving your body a little bit because you've been sitting for a bit. Oh my gosh, there's so many people here. I know, Miss Laura took us out of the classroom. You have to tell me about your day. Calm down, okay. Here's the song that we do to calm down our bodies. Okay, watch. Hands on my tummy. You're supposed to say that. Say, hands on my tummy. Hands on my tummy. Then I say, stop. Then I say, stop. Name my feeling. Name my feeling. I feel. I, you know what, I feel excited. I feel excited. <laughs> Take a belly breath. Take a belly breath. Read it. And read up. You did it! Yay, you did it! So for us, Frida, maybe they'll maybe they'll come back again. But that's one of the songs that we do. And uh, at the Q and A, I'll exit the PowerPoint and I'll show you what my screen looks like for the digital tools for this uh, curriculum and how I've accessed lots of songs, lots of songs. This is early childhood. So there's like a cleanup song, a listening rule song, all sorts of songs. And uh, why do we do this? Because guess what? Here's the good news. Even if they've gone through trauma, the neuroplasticity in the brain makes it so that if you have repeated positive experiences, it'll reverse the effects of chronic stress. We can partially reverse what they've been through by incorporating cell. So now we're getting to some good news. And these are a lot of the tools I use to teach it. You have Fred and Frida. Now here's the interesting thing for you guys, that I don't quite, like I'm still getting the grips of it and the hang of it. Like Dr. Edgar mentions this in his book, and you know, he technically published it first. If you look up Cell and Music, <laughs> he, he certainly comes up. I, my article comes up and he comes up. So I'm like, I'm like, remember Wayne's World, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. So, you know, I'm mentioning Dr. Edgar there. But one of the interesting things that we do is we know there's a, spe a specific series and set of uh, like first thens to sex social emotional learning. So before I get too mixed up, I'm going to read it to you. You cannot identify your feeling until you know how to pay attention to the teacher and follow directions and ask to go to the bathroom. You can't do these other things in a social emotional early childhood classroom at least without understanding what comes next. So what I noticed for you guys is you're given all these social emotional competencies, but there's no kind of order, right? So when you think about, you know, if you're a band teacher, if you're a general music teacher, if you're a choral teacher, if, if you're going to start to use the crosswalk and framework and embed cell, well, are you going to do, like in September, are you going to have them identify their own feelings in the music first? Are you going to work on the relationship ones? Like, what is the order you guys are going to do? It's interesting. It's an, it's an interesting thing because it looks to me like it's your choice or it's via, like if your district, just because I know a lot of districts recently purchased new curriculums because all the standards have been changing all across the boards and these board of ed meetings have been crazy with like budget meetings, right? So maybe you're going to be given new stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, this is taken care of for me. Great. But if it's not, what's going to happen is we'll go to Pinterest, you go here, there, oh, I need a social, emotional music thing. My principal wants to see something like this. And you're going to see the crosswalk and the framework and how I put all this together. And that's what I'm here to, to explain how I figured it out. I spoke with Art said NJ, and so I'm kind of like the cheerleader on the messenger. This is something also that makes an interesting new avenue why music teachers will be very important, speaking of messengers, messengers for self. Why? Because these visuals are going to stop working with the children who grew up not seeing the other covered half of a person's face. The Journal, the journal of Neonatal Nursing predicts that children born during the pandemic will have difficulty reading faces due to seeing covered mouths the first year and a half of their life. So, uh, not before. 
So we have to be prepared for this generation of children. Like, think about it. They're going to be 10 in 2030, right? So, you know, we have to think about how, what their social emotional development is going to be. And we need to plan ahead of time for that. So what's interesting is that children um, embrace social emotional learning and coping skills in music anyway. In music, we teach a lot of social emotional regulation. Without knowing it, we do. And just because I'm an early music buff, I used to play at the New York Continual Collective, I can't help but mention, if you're like, huh, music, emotions, connections, yeah, that used to be part of the purpose in the Baroque era about the affects. You remember music history? I went to Mason Gross. Music history class, the affects, right? the doctrine of the affects. So this has been a relationship. We've, we've had this going on for a long, long time. Research shows that general music program activities like improvisation and identifying emotion through music are effective as a form of social emotional learning. And that's blue because I just screenshotted it out of the original article from the George Lucas site. So if you click on it, it brings you to the research. That's how they like things. Like they don't want like APA. They're like, give, give us a blue link. Now, here's something interesting. They told me a cut from my article, but I thought it was fascinating to know. There was a, ch a clinical trial of 40 children with leukemia and they had less pain during lumbar puncture procedures when there was music playing versus without. So, wow, we, there's so many statistics that are just pointing to this connection with music and social emotional learning and how it makes kids feel. And it's amazing to know, hey, this even has some therapeutic properties. Okay. Uh, 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 yes. My daughter's surgeon, so she's going through that's one of the reasons why she picked that field. That's and amazing. Music that is amazing. That is amazing. Well, that's the webinar Arts NJ New Jersey told me because when I said music has healing properties, they said, stop, you're not a music therapist. Alert, alert, alert. If I repeat, if you use cell and you feel like you are suddenly a music therapist, you're not. And there's a webinar for that. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, fine. Yeah. Oh my, okay. Um, but you can still make a difference. You can still make a difference in a child's life, okay? But you're going to be hearing over and over again, yes, you sell. You can make a difference, but not too much. You're not a music therapist. That's something completely different. That's completely different. Okay. <coughs> the framework. Hands in the sky if you kind of know a little bit about it. Oh, hands in the sky if you know a lot. You've seen a lot of webinars. You know a lot about it. I am so happy I came here today and understand why they're like, you're a preschool teacher? You, you know about self, come on in, come on in. So, okay, here's what has happened. I spoke to the people at Arts at NJ, and I said, the same way I'm a preschool teacher, and I create my lesson plans, and cell is in my lesson plans, and I do that to meet fidelity for my position. Are you gonna ask September 2022 for music teachers to include this framework and the crosswalk and everything, and the new EUs and EQs, and they make everything beautiful, just like Shauna Longo's thing. Do they have to do that to meet fidelity for their job, for their position? And she said, well, in a matter of words, yes. And I was like, well, you guys gonna talk about that? I don't really. <laughs> so, so here's what's happened. Uh, Cell for New Jersey and Arts at NJ have an alliance where they work together, they put a lot of research and planning into this to pair together the um, 2020 standards and the cell standards they came up with. Okay, I have a link on the digital version to a PDF that features Shauna Longo's, uh, and she spoke Wednesday. She was, you know, she was here um, to her lesson plan that included cell and music and art. But I mean, you don't have to mix up all different like areas and genres. I'm going to show you what it looks like if it will let me click forward. Go. Yay. Okay, so grade band cell competency. She shows self-awareness because they were listening to music. How did it make them feel? And they drew a picture. That's in a nutshell. She has a visual art standard and she has a couple music standards for connecting and even for performing, which is really interesting. Um, the enduring understanding and essential questions, they come from using their site. Now I'm gonna explain how to do that if you don't know how to do that. So the competencies for cell 
are on the website um, for the handbook guide that uh, Arts Ed New Jersey has, and there's links to all of this. You would select the areas that you're teaching, what processes, these you know correlate to the 2020 music standards, the grade band, and then what cell competencies you like. And not like a PDF, but it will generate in the browser a lot of the standards and how they all work together. Now the other way to do it, here's the links. I, I, told, I told you I'd bring you the links. So this one on the bottom is how to make your own handbook. This one over here. This one is really interesting. This one is like if you feel like going for the journey of the one ring, you know? If you want to go into like the magical land of like how does this work with this, those are clickable, all of those little pictures. Not my presentation, but when you go to the site. So if you know, well, they're kind of going to be performing or whatever because we're having a rehearsal and how do I include cell in a rehearsal, uh, oh, we can talk about how they feel nervous. That's a feeling. We can talk about how they feel nervous and how to get over feeling nervous, how to prepare for the day of the concert not to make the nervousness go away, or how will we practice enough, we build confidence, and then that will make our nervousness go away. Oh, okay, so that, there's my lesson plan. Um, so you could go to self-management and click and click and click and you can just, you know, you can go on your own little hero's journey that way. Okay, now, are you ready to act out like little kids? Yes! Let's go. Let's go. We're doing good, I believe. Yeah, we're doing good. Okay. So, like I said, when I, when I wrote the article, um, when I wrote the article, I had no idea what was happening with the inclusion of the crosswalk in the framework. I really didn't know. And I actually wrote these because COVID, and, and by the way, I didn't expressly mention it, but there is a picture of a little girl who was shot in the leg. So during COVID, during social distancing, I didn't have a choice to social distance. And I actually had to physically carry this little girl up and down our stairs in our preschool and be very close to her. This is before the vaccine anything. So if she was exposed to it through her physical therapist, whatever, it didn't matter. I was doing my job. And I really wanted preschool level music, social, emotional things because the visuals just felt so silly. It felt so silly to say, oh, look at his angry face. You know, he's mad that she painted on this paper because they're seeing the other side of masks. Um, so these are lesson plans that I came up with, but thank goodness they do fit the standards. Okay, they do fit the standards and the crosswalk and how they blend. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And then that, you know, feel free. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to say, you know, on record and on camera, copy and paste. But I'm just saying they're, they're there. And I showed the people at Arts NJ and they were like, oh, okay, that looks pretty cool. And I was like, oh, wow, Arts NJ told me they're cool. So they're going to go into world music and the feeling of happiness, classical music and anger. Hands in the sky. Who gets angry over classical music? I do. I play violin. I do. You have no, I do. The blues and sadness, rock pop disappointment, although I think that should be switched, and bossa nova or jazz for mindfulness. And again, just to back everything up with research, isn't it amazing that children as young as three notice emotions like happy and sad in only an excerpt that's 0.5 of a second long? So if you think about it, we're starting to not totally undo, like that's not sad, that's minor. Like we're not undoing that, but we're tapping into that and we're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, that was that was that was interesting. That was interesting. Wait, go go back to that. Wait a minute. It sounded sad to you. Yeah, the composer wrote it in minor, that's great. But it sounded sad to you. Does it remind you of a time you were sad? What happened when you felt sad? Maybe next time you feel sad you should listen to this music and, you know, not make a bad decision and do something else. Right? Like, we can use that gut instinct now as a tool for self. So here's plain Jane what, and I'm going to go forward and back. This is what the 2020 standards look like for the lesson plans they came up with without self. Just, just the facts, ma'am. Just what they look like. I was using responding and connecting, and I was using anchor standards 7 and 8 and 11 and 10. Okay. Okay. You guys ready? You guys ready? I love this song too. Okay. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're going to go to the country of Kenya. That is a country in Africa. And down in, in Kenya, they speak Swahili. And when they say hello, they say Jamawana. Jamawana. Thank you for pitching in. Usually the kids be like, okay, great. So they say that. And it's like, can you say Jamawana? 
Javawana. So I would pass out scarves, and maybe simultaneously as I would pass out scarves, whatever, but you could feel free to use like your little paper things as a scarf, and like, or you don't have to. It's you don't have to. Um, but I was just in my mind, like, how are they going to be engaged? I don't know. I had to answer that question to get here. How will you keep people engaged? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's all jokes. It's all juggle. I don't know. Um, so, so, or you could forego props and just have them dance. But the important thing is about the happiness and the social interaction and saying hello. So we'll just listen to John Bobana for a minute. Oh, I got this. move however you want to is because research shows that music dance movement for children with developmental delays it helps them move that weight around and they find their midline and there's a lot of research to this so sometimes like improvisation and dance it's a great thing for kids like this that's a that's a great thing so in this instance I, I, okay I saw this great article and you know George Lucas said yes to it it must be good so I would check off dance, music, general music. I need them EUs, EQs, and it's like performing, we're dancing, we're connecting. It's really preschool, but you would select second grade. And why you would do that is because the site will bring up something called EE, early elementary. And then by accessing the early elementary through this, then you got what'll work for preschool or kindergarten or first grade. And we're talking about social awareness. You have to say hello, greetings with people and relationship skills. So that's what it looks like from the site when I popped it into the Build Your Own Handbook. And this is what I would put in. That's what I would put in for that little. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I, I, I know, I was like showing my family, and I was like, this is how it all works. And they're like, okay. I was just like, you don't understand. This is all so new. And, but notice that like, I put dance here where in Shauna Longo's there's art. So that's that's how you would incorporate it. Um, and then the learning experience sequence. Oh, see my slide on John Bowana. <laughs> that's just for you guys. Okay. So my friends, you know, have you ever felt blue or the blues sometimes? Yeah. You know, when people say they feel this color, they're, they, you know, it's not about the color blue. It means they have the blues. You know, it's okay to feel upset if you have gone through something really bad. Uh, the blues is actually a genre of music. There's the father of Chicago blues, so Muddy Waters there. And it was created by African Americans in the southern United States to express sadness and hardship. And sometimes even playing this music gets you, helps you get through the hard times. It's about hard times, but it helps you get through the hard times. Maybe we can keep a steady beat to this, I don't know. So I'm passing it, here's a rhythm stick, here's a rhythm stick, here's a rhythm stick, or you can tap on your lap. Um, and you might be surprised. I mean, it seems simple, but children might open up about how it made them feel. And if this seems too, too simple for a class, again, this is early elementary, there's a lot of ways to modify this. Okay, I, I, I really wanna hear you guys keep a beat to this. This is gonna be, this is fascinating to me. Again, we're doing good. Okay. Um, 
how would you do it? How would you pair it? So, you know, you went on to like the greatest music Pinterest website ever. You found that blue song and sadness and hardship. So how would you pair the 2020 standards with what cell competency? Does anyone want to take a, t a stab at it? How do you pair it? If not, it's okay. I can just I can move forward. I can show you what I thought of. This is just like a real life example of, you know, depending on how, um, depending on the level of fidelity to this that everyone has to start to do, you know, you'll see a lot of cell lesson plans and you'll see a lot of cell recommendations and then how you really do it, right? Um, so this is what I came up with. 11 is talking about societal, cultural, historical context to deepen understanding. And then it's just number one, it's just about our feelings. It's just about our feelings and our thoughts. And there's that EE for early elementary. And those are all the other levels to put them together. And there's another lesson plan, yay! <laughs> okay. All right. One, two, three, give yourself a big hug, give yourself a big hug. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh, let go, let go. Oh, didn't it feel nice to let go? See, hugs are nice, but tight feelings in your body, that's a sign you have what's called a strong feeling. Can you say it? Strong feeling. Can you clap it? Strong feeling. Can you tap it? Strong feeling. So let's listen to this music together, and if you hear a strong feeling from Mr. Ludwig von Beethoven, you're gonna squeeze the ball. You're gonna squeeze the ball. You're gonna squeeze. Go get your ball. You self-talk. I'm picking up my ball. I'm picking up my ball. I like to get my ball. My ball rolled away. Excellent communication skills. Excellent. Okay. When you think you hear a strong feeling, you're gonna squeeze the ball. Oh, when the strong feeling goes away, you're gonna let go, but don't, but remember, if you choose to drop it, you have to choose to pick it up because Miss Laura is not picking up. That's called limit setting, by the way. I do trainings on that, I'm just saying. Oh. is not just about anger, but what's important is about the letting go and how your body feels better. So after that, you would teach something that letting go of the ball, well, you can do that with your body with a strong emotion. You can take a belly breath. You can take a belly breath. You put your hands in your belly, you breathe in, you breathe out. And I won't breathe out in this map mic for the next person. So, so that's actually how that one works. So just to jump ahead, that's how I paired that one, okay. Can I tell you guys a story? I know it's music class, I want to tell you a story. Bella was looking forward to the class field trip to the zoo, but it was canceled when it rained. How do you think she felt? Do you think she felt angry? No. Do you think she had a calm body? No. She was sad! Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, she was sad. She was very, very sad. That specific kind of sadness is called disappointment. Can you say it? Disappointment. Can you tap it? Disappointment. Yeah, she was very disappointed. So let's listen to this piece of music. And before we, I start playing the music, okay, I wrote art table. I'm like, went back to the mode. I wrote art table because in preschool, like there aren't like everyone has a desk, right? Um, so it could be they're at their normal desk. Right? We're going to draw a picture of how this piece makes us feel. But what it's interesting that I wanted to make the children understand is that if they like rock and roll music, which maybe they do, they don't really know they like it, but they kind of do. They've seen cartoons like bands, or there's like popular bands or whatever, or have older siblings or people in their family like rock music. And you explain the instruments in a rock band, and you explain usually this music makes you feel excited, but sometimes they can use this music to express whatever they want to feel. because. Everybody feels sad sometimes, right? Okay. 
If you want to use your paper and just doodle a sad face, that's fine. Part of the purpose of this is to uh, remember a time when you felt disappointment in your sadness. Because they're supposed to listen to the lyrics like you guys right now. Now the looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. What's interesting about that song, well, there's a lot of interesting things, actually. If you're a big Beatles buff, there's a lot of interesting things about that piece. But what's really interesting is that the lyrics very explicitly, almost like this John Dowland flow my tears, right? It very specifically tells you what went wrong. It's not just that it's minor or whatever. So the purpose is, but the point that makes a lesson plan work is that children should have enough uh, receptive listening skills to hear the words and then make it sink into them. Right? So that's how I pair those. Last one. Okay. So before this lesson plan, now this was an idea I had because I have a lot of teachers who do mindfulness coming into my room, my preschool room, and you know, they hit the singing bowl and they go vroom, and then, and then everyone is just really quiet. And I don't know if you've seen this, but some of these um, mindfulness teachers, what they'll do is they don't want the teacher to interfere telling the kids, stop, stop, hey, hey, focus your attention now. She, she's doing something. Like, no, like she wants them to act out and be weird. And then if she hits this gong in a certain number of times, all the kids will look around the room and be like, oh, they're doing a belly breath, they're breathing, they're, they're doing this namaste thing. Okay, I'll, I'll join in and do it. And I thought, you know, there must be a more musical angle to this, sort of like how music puts you in a meditative state a bit. Um, I mean, I can only imagine this lady does mindfulness for so many hours a day, and she actually hits the singing bowl, and there's nothing musical going on in her life, and she's doing this for hours and hours. And I'm like, you don't play an instrument, do you? Like, it's a little weird to me. Um, but it's really helpful, and there's a lot of studies that show it's excellent. Anyway, anyway. Um, I think, and I know this has happened to me before, so I have my own case study. I think bossa nova music has a very calming, relaxing effect, because one time I was listening to one of these pieces, and then I rear-ended somebody. So I was in such a calm state, I actually rear-ended someone. That's a true story. Um, so we're going to listen to this piece. Um, and when we listen to it, we're going to take some belly breaths. And here's a tip. We like to tell children to close their eyes or like seven up, heads down, thumbs up, whatever. Some children feel comfortable closing their eyes. They can always like co cover their eyes just with their hands like this. And you just got to let them like trust that they'll do it. Because some kids feel insecure about closing their eyes completely. They're going to listen to the piece. And then when they open their eyes, guess what? The objects from the room are going to be hidden around. A stick, a stone, it's the end of, well, maybe not the end of the room, but, you know, a hairpin, a flower. Those objects, you can sort of, you might have to prep them, or when their eyes are closed, prep it around the room. And then when they open their eyes, they're going to notice they're there. And you've had no idea, but I secretly hid Snickers bars all around. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't do that at all. No, I didn't do that at all. So let's listen to a little Agos de Marco and get nice and relaxed. listening to it a lot uh, as my dad is just driving us back and forth forever in the car um, but because and I want to be really specific about this it's a little upbeat so you're not going to lose too many kids who get bored easily right it's a little upbeat and the other thing too is that you can make vocabulary cards where you're even teaching like the you know oh my gosh it's in Portuguese right Okay, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to play out of the song. So you can even create vocabulary cards for the objects in the song, specifically to listen for, to look for, so many different prompts you can do. I mean, obviously, you know, um, there's, a, there's a part sung in English. Uh, some of the things she says in English aren't so great around kids going through adversity. Like, you know, she talks about a shot in the dark and what, what I, you know, I don't know. It's a wild, wild place in South America. So, so um, 
you might want to use that song or a different bossa nova song. But it's just something to expose children to. I don't think kids, I think we take for granted that there's so many different genres of music and our very young learners, like they really haven't heard a lot of it. it they really haven't. So these are the cell and the standards above that I'd like to combine and use for it. Okay, it's about interpreting it. It's about interpreting it, perceiving it, maybe analyzing it, because there's words and the lyrics in it, and finding them. And these are about, and just this is a really good one to note, is that five, um, cell five, that is the one about taking a belly breath and calming down specifically about calming down. So if you have a lesson plan or you have something you'd like to do where you're gonna incorporate how to calm down, you wanna, you wanna use that one, that's the one. And that's it. <laughs> that, that, is, that is my full-ish presentation because just for the sake of time um, and just for the sake of the, uh, just I got here last minute, so some of these things I was rushing through, but if anyone would like me to go back and show you the Arts at NJ website with the framework or even the article or any questions, um, yeah, feel, feel free to, we can do a question and answer session now, otherwise, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. What I can do. Oh, by the way, uh, if this was helpful, can you raise your hand if this was helpful a little bit? A little bit. Yay! Thank you. <laughs>